Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. Today we're going to learn how to stamp a single layer card. So I did a temporary panel to get a kind of an idea of how I wanted my layout to be on my card. But I do a second one because I wasn't really pleased with my first one. You'll see the second one when we start actually stamping our panel. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is make our masks. Masks are super important when you're doing a single layer or one layer card because you're going to be stamping uh, layers of images. When you're doing a one layer card, you have to stamp from the front to the back. So doing a pre-plan is really important when you're doing this. If you've never stamped masks before, it's very similar to fussy cutting a stamp, except you're doing it on masking paper. I use Avery L temporary labels because it's a great big huge package of them and they're pretty substantial. Um, I get a couple of uses out of them. I'm really bad about losing masks. So, uh, you know, as far as the cost of it goes, I, I think that the it, this is the most bang for the buck on masking paper because, like I said, I'm terrible about losing masks. I forget to stick them to my, my stamp sets and stuff. You'll notice I also made sure that my stamps are really stamped clearly on here, and that's because I wear bifocals, and I need to make sure I can see the lines. I'll be real straight up honest about that. Um... When you're cutting masks, unlike uh, when you're fussy cutting an image, when you're cutting masks, you want to cut on the inside of the line and not on the outer edge of it. So cut to the inside of your outside line there. And because if you don't, you're going to get a little bit of a white line on the outer edge of your stamp. So when we go to stamp our uh, scissors are going to be sitting in front of our sewing machine. So I'm going to have a mask over top of the scissors on my paper and I'm going to stamp the sewing machine. And I don't want a white line around the outer edge of my scissors. So I need to cut on the inside of my scissors so that I don't have an additional white line around it. There is the option that you can also die cut these images and just be happy that there is a white line around them. You can absolutely do that if you want to. That is the, the, the cheat way to do it and you can absolutely do that if you want to. This is the I'm going to Copic color a single layer card method. Uh, lawn fawn images are pretty clean lines so these are really simple uh, images to create a one layer card with because their their images are such clean lines so I have no problem doing this very quickly. This card took me probably about an hour to make including uh, pre-planning including cutting out all the masks. It did not include me chasing my cat off the table a couple of times. Lucy decided that she wanted to help a couple of times and I had to to play with her a couple times. It did not include that time. <laughs> uh, also, when you are cutting out masks or even fussy cutting a whole lot, use the entire length of your, your scissors. It will reduce fatigue on your hand. Use your non-dominant hand to turn the cardstock uh, or, or the paper or the masking paper, whatever you're cutting, instead of turning your scissors. It will reduce fatigue some, tremendously on your hand. Just a couple of tips there for your masking needs. So we're done with our masking here and we're gonna go ahead and start our stamping. I said that I redid my panel uh, a second time. There it is over here to our right and I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. I'm using a Stamparatus by Stampin' Up and we're using the Lawn Fawn Stamping uh, Sewn with Love stamp set. And here is the, the layout that I decided on. And see how what I did was I stamped all of the images and I used masks just to make sure that I liked the layout of everything on here. And I decided that where the that was a big empty space right there where those scissors are and it needed something else. So I went ahead and stamped the scissors. And I just wanted to make sure that it was there. So we're stamping everything that's in front first. So the scissors are going to be on top of the sewing machine. The thimble's in front of the pin cushion. And the button in, is in front of the other spools. And the spool is on top of the sewing machine. 
So we need to stamp all of those first. So we're going to do that and we're going to add our masks to those. We're going to do that real quick. And uh, the one thing I really like about the Avery temporary labels is it, they're sticky, but they're not overly sticky. To remove masks, I recommend a craft knife instead of your fingernail. Just grab the edge of it and pull it off the paper. It, they come off really easy. Next, we're going to do our second layer here. Sorry, my big head's in the way because I'm trying to align my stamp it, my sewing machine there. We're going to do our second layer here, and that is our pin cushion and our sewing machine and a spool. Ink that up. I'm using Maker Forte Eclipse Black Ink. It is a Copic Safe ink. And now we're going to clean everything up and add our masks to this layer. And when I am done with our stamping, I actually ink blend three layers of colors and my camera cut off and I didn't know it. Sorry. I, I used some blending brushes and I just did a, a, a gray and a blue and a purple at the top just to give some color in the background because I did not want to Copic color all of the background. I just wanted to Copic color the images. Keep it really simple. So we're going to do our button jar in the background here and another spool in the background. Really simple. Pull that example out. Go ahead and stamp that. And now we're going to put our remaining um, masks on. I needed another spool mask so that I could ink blend on the background so I just used the leftover ink on the stamp and I'm going to cut out that second mask that I need for that spool really quickly and then I'll ink blend the background. So my camera shut off and I didn't get the ink blending or the uh, removal of the masks but just take a craft knife and slip it under the edge of the the mask and peel them off i also stamped the needle that's in the stamp set in silver embossing and added a little curl of uh, thread to the end of that i'm going to copic color all of the images on here add a little bit of shadows under them i also go through and stamp some of the string images in black and just add those randomly through here I take some red distress oxide ink, it's candied apple, and I add hearts in the background. The sentiment part that I'm going to use is I love you so much and I stamp the so part and, uh, and emboss that in white detail embossing powder and die cut that image. And I also die cut a piece of black card stock in, out of the Lawn Fawn stitch scalloped rectangle frame and add that popped up with some foam tape to the front of this. Add a little touches of glitter gloss and some glossy accents here and there and it's finished. It is the most adorable little card and my grandmother is a seamstress so I'm going to send this to her. This is going to be just a surprise for grandma in the mail. Grandma, I hope you're not watching this because I know you do watch some of these but grandma, I hope you get this before you actually watch this. Um, and but this the main focus of this video as as the title in, uh, says is how to do a one layer card so remember do your panel first off to the side that is your test panel take a scrap piece of paper stamp everything out don't worry about using masks or you can use masks if you want to make sure your test panel reflects what you want the card layout to look like and use that as your guide for your finished panel um, your test panel should be just, it's your play panel. It is, you can use whatever color ink you want to on it. You can, I went through three, don't worry. I did it three different times. I had red ink all over mine because I had red ink on a mat somewhere that I could not find. Still haven't found, but there's red ink on something that won't dry and I still can't find it. <laughs> I had red fingerprints all over everything. Can't find it. <laughs> Welcome to the life of the craft room. Anyway, so just test everything out, get a layout of it, and then lay everything out, stamp it from front to back. Make sure that you stamp everything that's going to be first 
in the forefront of your card make sure you stamp that first put your masks on the second layer put your masks on and the back layer and put your masks on then if you're going to ink blend go ahead and ink blend over top of that and then peel all your masks off and just use the edge of a craft knife and peel those up be gentle with them um, don't just rip them up because even the best craft masking paper on the face of the planet can rip your paper just peel them up slowly and gently and if the, of course you can reuse your masks if you haven't um, if they haven't ripped or anything and if you're in a pinch for uh, masking paper you can use post-it notes that have the full sticky on the back of them uh, you can take a sheet of typing paper and put two-way glue on the back of it and let it dry really really well and then detack it a little bit that will work as well just be sure you detack it enough where it won't stick to your paper completely um, so those are some options for some masking if you don't have masking paper and don't let it intimidate you creating a one layer card doesn't it is not difficult just remember the front thing the very first thing that you're going to see if you do a little planning on it just take 10 minutes and do a little planning on it that first thing that you see is the first thing that you need to stamp and use that as a practice guide for your stamping as you're actually making that final stamp on your final panel it's not automatic that you are going to know exactly where to put those stamps when you are uh, doing that final panel the one that you see me coloring now you're not going to know that you have to do a layout of it when you're doing a, a one layer card like this um, probably the only time that I don't do it is if it is a floral image and it's only a few florals in that that bundle of images then I just kind of wing it when I'm doing it um, so just know that as you are coloring everything as you are thinking about planning a card you want to try one layer card you've never done it before and you want to cut you know you want to color one it does take a little bit of practice to make sure that you get all of your elements in the right order as you're stamping them so show yourself some grace have fun with it and if you do make a mistake i promise you're probably going to be the only one that notices it just keep that in mind when you're stamping as well so I'm just gonna play a little bit of music for the rest of this card because we're almost done and we're just doing some normal everyday crafty kind of stuff here finishing up the card and thank you so much for joining me today y'all have an amazing day and try out doing a one layer card and keeping it simple and try it out I'd love to see the results let me know